That was actually a pretty good song to sing and kind of goes along a little bit with the message tonight. Uh, because what I want us to, to take a look at is Jesus and what he looks like. You know, we celebrate Christmas, of course, the birth of Jesus. And when you think of Jesus, oftentimes you think of him as, you know, what, the way he was on this earth. And we're going to take a look at the way he was on this earth. But then we're also going to take a look at the way he is now. Uh, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they say, well, you know, the God of the Old Testament, you know, he's this vengeful, wrathful God. And then they say, but Jesus, you know, Jesus is all about love. And most people, when they get a picture of Jesus in their mind, they picture a hippie, you know, with uh, who's, who maybe who will smoke marijuana with them or something. But it's just all about love and peace and, you know, that kind of thing. And we have, if you go down our stairs there towards the basement, there's a picture on the wall, right, of Jesus you know, you see, I chuckle every time I see that picture. You know, I mean, that guy looks like he just, you know, uh, came from Norway or something. You know, and he's got the long blonde hair that just got freshly washed with head and shoulders, perfectly combed. He's got a beard. You know, he looks good, right? And that's kind of like the picture that a lot of people have of Jesus. That's nowhere near where Jesus was, you know, when he came here. It doesn't look like him at all. By the way, there are no pictures that exist of Jesus. You know, the Polaroids, Polaroid, you know, we had, you remember Kodak pictures, cameras, and Polaroid cameras. You know, now they, those are history, you know, where you would, you know, you, you take a picture and you got this big light flash, you know, and everybody's blinded for about, you know, 15 minutes and then this, this picture comes out. But, you know, that was, those were in history, but not that far back. You know, so there are no pictures of Jesus Christ when he was on this earth. But we have all these people that think he was all, you know, just this, this beautiful person. Uh, and now, you know, and, and people oftentimes think, well, that's the way he is now. But that's not the way he is now at all. Let's take a look at the way he was on this earth and the way he will be when we see Jesus again. When we see Jesus, he's going to look a lot different than he did in the Bible. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 53 to begin with. Isaiah chapter 53. See, the problem with a lot of people is they get their doctrine and they get their ideas from movies and things like that on television, you know, and they think, well, that's how Jesus looks. Uh, but you know, they, they don't get their doctrine and their ideas, you know, from the Bible. So we're going to start in Isaiah. We're going to go all the way and we're going to spend a good bit of time in the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation describes Jesus the way we are going to see him the next time we see him. So we're going to take a look at that as well. But Isaiah chapter 53, beginning in verse 1. The Bible reads, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Now, of course, this is a prophecy of Jesus coming in the New Testament. And the Bible clearly says that Jesus was not up out of the ordinary. You know, we have these pictures of people sometimes in the Bible. I like when sometimes people are pictured, you know, another famous Bible person that people picture that I believe they get it completely wrong is Samson. You know, people look at Samson, the strongest man, Right? Well, they look at him and, and, you know, they immediately have in their mind this, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, and Conan or something like that, just this big bulky guy. But the Bible never says that about Samson. Indeed, people wondered where he got his strength. I believe that Samson was just an ordinary looking fellow, nothing out of the ordinary, because his strength did not come from his muscles. His strength came from God. You know, God allowed him to have that strength. Anyway, Jesus Christ, when he was on this earth, there was nothing out of the ordinary with him. When Judas Iscariot went to Deceive, you know, went to uh, deceive Jesus and to turn him over to the, the soldiers there. You know, Jesus and his disciples come from, from the mount. And Judas had to show them which one was Jesus with a kiss. You know, it's not like they came down out of the mountain. You've got these disciples around him. You know, Jesus, then he's eight feet tall or something like that. You know, there was nothing about him that stuck out. Nothing about him that made us think, oh, that guy's really special. That guy's out of the ordinary. You know, nothing like that at all when he first came to this earth. 
The Bible doesn't say he was necessarily ugly or anything, but he was just, just a normal person. There was nothing that stuck out, you know, about Jesus Christ. Now, go with me to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 in the New Testament. Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. The Bible reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So in, in Philippians chapter 2, Paul says, you know, when Jesus came to this earth, you know, he, hum, he, he was in heaven, you know, he was equal to God. You know, thought it not himself robbery to be equal to God. But when Jesus came to this earth, he became as a servant, you know, and he humbled himself. At, you know, John chapter 13, John, we're not going to turn there, but John chapter 13 is the chapter about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Yeah, and he washes their feet. Peter says, you're not going to wash my feet. Yeah, and, and Jesus says, you know, I have to wash your feet because I'm setting you an example. He said that if you're going to be a leader, you must also be a servant. You know, the servant is not greater than his master. So when Jesus came to this earth the first time in fashion as a man, you know, born in Bethlehem, you know, old little town of Bethlehem as we sung there, you know, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He did not come to execute judgment. He didn't come to execute wrath. He came to die on the cross for our sins. That was his purpose. And he was a servant. And that's what he did. That's the Jesus that we have to embrace. You know, of course, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, the next time he comes, it's going to be much, much different. The Bible says, you know, in Philippians here, it alludes to it. He came initially as a servant, but after he died on the cross, you know, and Paul says that through here, you know, wherefore God hath, uh, it says in verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, you know, because as a result, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. What are those things under the earth? That's those folks in hell. You know, they will also bow to Jesus. Those who rejected him in this life, those who are rejecting him now and who laugh at him and mock him and, and all those kinds of things. Look, after they spend some, some time in hell, they're going to bow at the name of Jesus also. Yeah, so he came, and go with me to Matthew, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus is speaking, and in verse 28 he says, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus said, come unto me, and he says, I am meek. Right? He says right there, I am meek and lowly in heart. When Jesus came to this earth, he didn't come as, you know, that's one reason that the Jews were so upset when he said, you know, 
uh, that he was Jesus Christ. You know, he was the son of God. He was the king of the Jews that was foretold in the Old Testament. They got real upset because this guy, he wasn't nothing special. You know, he's not, he's not uh, you know, so powerful and strong and all those kinds of things. But, of course, he said, you know, my kingdom is not of this world. You know, my kingdom is coming in the future. So let's take a look now. at So, so we see what Jesus Christ looked like when he was on this earth. You know, nothing special. And he was a servant. And he came to seek and to save that which is lost. You know, we, we have to take the Bible as a whole. Because a lot of times people say, well, you know, Jesus is all about love. And Jesus would never get mad at anybody. And, you know, Jesus, he, he, you know, the Jesus of the Bible, you know, he would accept homosexuality. He would accept all these kinds of things. You know, this is not true at all. Jesus does not accept those things. But Jesus, as, you know, there were a couple of people that came to Jesus at one time. Jesus was oftentimes healing people, teaching people, that kind of thing. And one guy came to him and said, you know, sir, he said, you know, this guy owes me some, some uh, money and he's not paying me back. Can you make him pay me back? You know, Jesus did not come to this earth the first time to execute judgment and justice upon the earth. He said, look, you have laws and courts and things like that. You, you handle that amongst yourselves. Jesus' purpose when he came to this earth the first time was to die on the cross to save us from our sins, to seek and to save that which was lost. That is it. Okay, so, and because he doesn't mention homosexuality, that doesn't mean all of a sudden, oh, well, Jesus is all for homos, you know, and loves them and everything. No. Because the Bible is very clear that that's abomination, that God hates him. You know, and Jesus Christ, when he came to this earth, but he, he wasn't about you know, setting up those kinds of things. You have the laws, he said. You have the prophets. He was here for a specific purpose. But what happens when he comes back? Let's take a look at that in 2 Thessalonians chapter, uh, beginning in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and then we're going to go from there and spend the rest of our time in the book of Revelation taking a look at Jesus Christ. A lot of people get a lot of end time stuff confused. We're going to take a look at some of that tonight. But 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, is this the meek, humble, you know, servant Jesus Christ that was on this earth? This is at the rapture when he comes back. Is he going to be all about love? The Jesus Christ that comes back at the rapture, is he going to be just all about loving and caring for everybody? Is that what it says here? Let's take a look at what it says. This, is, is, this involves the rapture. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all of them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day, Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith with power. If Jesus comes back while we are still here, we're going to see a much different Jesus in the clouds than the Jesus that was here on this earth before. But we as Christians are going to rejoice in that. But he's going to be a very scary sight. And he's coming in flaming fire. This is Jesus Christ we're talking about here coming and fired with vengeance and all kinds of things there, you know, to, and when he raptures us, then that's when, you know, all kinds of problems are going to break out on the earth, when he pours out his wrath on this world. Now take a look at his description in Revelation, the book of Revelation. You know, the book of Revelation tends to uh, intimidate a lot of people. We're actually, it's, it's actually a book that is not, that hard to understand, I don't believe, the book of Revelation. We're going to take a look at Jesus in the book of Revelation tonight, but uh, there, hopefully before the first of the year, I'm going to you know, take a Sunday morning and we're going, to, we're going to do a little study on how to understand the book of Revelation because it is not that hard to do, I don't believe. Uh, but we're going to take a look at Jesus in the book of Revelation tonight. The book of Revelation, Jesus, uh, Revelation chapter 1. 
Let's start in, in Revelation chapter 1, verse, beginning in verse 5. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed from our, us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So is this kind of Jesus that, that we see in the pictures that's going to be coming in the clouds, you know? And No, people who see him are going to wail, you know, in fear. What does he look like? We have a, descript, a physical description of what Jesus looks like right now in Revelation chapter 1. Let's take a look at it here. Verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white, like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. This is Jesus Christ right now. This is the one that's going to come in the clouds. This is one Jesus that's going to come and execute judgment. When he comes in the clouds and raptures his people, and we're all in heaven, and the only ones left on this earth are unbelievers, you know, they're not going to see the Jesus of the manger. They're not going to see the Jesus that was a servant. They're going to see the Jesus that we see here in the book of Revelation. Verse 15, And his feet likened to fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Here, this is a powerful man. I, watched, I was watching, uh, every Saturday morning I like to watch a documentary. It's kind of my thing. I get up early, have breakfast, watch uh, some documentary. And my documentary this past Saturday morning was on, um, um, what was I think? Natural disasters. Natural disasters, yep. And it was on uh, tsunamis, you know. And these, these big walls of water, of course, that, that uh, are caused, you know, you've got earthquakes under the sea, and then you've got these great big walls of waters. And, and they were talking to some of the uh, survivors, you know, of these things. And they said the, the sound of the water coming in, was it, it was like an airplane right over your head, you know, like a train, you know. It was like something very, very sharp and very loud. And so we see here that, it, and, and that's, you know, they described it as like thinking, it's the end of the world. And that's, you know, that would be a voice of many waters. You know, think of the, just the ocean. You know, if you go down, you know, to the ocean, you go down to the beach and you try to carry on a conversation with somebody, it's a hard thing to do because the, the waves are crashing and everything and it's, it's, it's a very loud area. You know, and so his voice is as the sound of many waters. Verse 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying to me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So John had seen Jesus Christ, of course, when he was on this earth. But now he turns and sees him, and he describes this man all dressed in white, white hair, White face, his countenance is shining like the sun. It's like you're staring right into the sun. Eyes of flaming fire, feet of flaming fire. His voice is so loud and huge. It sounds like, you know, the voice of many waters. And John says, I fainted. You know, I passed out. <laughs> John, you know, he was scared to death. 
Now, if John passes out at the sight of Jesus today, you know, that should tell you what the people who see Jesus on this earth, when he comes to rapture his people, what those remaining on this earth, when they see that, how fearful and how afraid they're going to be. You know, they're going to see him coming and he, he's, he's going to be scary. Because he has now come, it is now too late to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And he has now come to pour out his wrath on this earth. And it's going to be a very scary time. And this is not Jesus' love. This is going to be Jesus' is angry. Because Jesus does get angry. You know, he, he got angry a little bit when he was here on this earth. When people were mistreating the house of God, when they were selling and buying and things like that. He was overturning the money changers. He made a whip. And drove people out. You know, does that sound like the just let everybody be kind of Jesus that a lot of people have a picture of in their minds? It's really not. Now, Jesus, when he now right now, he's even scarier than that. You know, because of the way he looks right now in heaven. Because this is what John is seeing. That's the Jesus that John is seeing there, that's the Jesus that's going to be coming in the clouds in the second coming. Let's take a look at some other uh, examples of him in the book of Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 verse 16. He's speaking to a church here in Revelation chapter 2 verse 16. And he says in Revelation 2 16, Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. We're going to see some descriptions of Jesus Christ that says that there's a sword coming out of his mouth, you know, and a, a, a sharp two-edged sword. Uh, let's go to verse, uh, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. We're not talking about God the Father here. We're talking about the Son of God. You know, right here, he's got eyes as a flame of fire and feet like brass. Let's go to uh, verse 21. He's talking to about a church here in verse 21. In verse 21, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have, uh, have already hold fast till I come. Jesus Christ is going to be one of punishment. You know, he punishes these people for following this doctrine of this woman, you know, Jezebel. And he, he says, you know, I'm going to, if they don't repent, I'm going to punish them. I'm going to destroy them. He says, but those of you who are holding fast to the doctrine, you hold fast to the doctrine, I will reward you. The Jesus Christ that is coming in the clouds, when every eye will see him, he is coming to punish those who need punished and reward those who are his children. Because we will be rewarded. As well, because there, there's, you know, it's, it's a frightening, it's going to be a frightening thing to see Jesus. But those of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who have accepted him as our Savior, it's going to be a wonderful thing for us. Because he will, because he will reward those who are his children. But he will punish the unbelievers and those kinds of things. Let's look at him in Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. We see another description of Jesus. And, you know, back, if you go back to, and you remember Isaiah, you know, a lot of times Isaiah talks about, you know, worthy is the lamb that was slain. You know, Jesus Christ is oftentimes referred to a lamb, to as a lamb. And he's referred to that in the book of Revelation as well. Revelation chapter 5, beginning in uh, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, this is God the Father sitting on the throne, a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. 
Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. This is Jesus Christ right here. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. So still, even though it's a lamb that's slain, it's not like a normal lamb that you would see. You know, it's slain. Uh, this lamb has seven horns and seven eyes. I've never seen a lamb like that before. But that is, you know, Jesus Christ there represented as that lamb who can open up the book, the only one who can open up that book with the seven seals. Now, what are the seven seals? Well, when you get to, you see six seals, uh, when he opens up six seals, that's, that's kind of, you know, uh, tribulation and all kinds of things that are poured out upon this earth. You know, and, and when he gets to the sixth seal, uh, he opens up the sixth seal, and that, according to Revelation, we'll go look at this in a, in a sermon later, According to Revelation, that seems to be the rapture. And then after that, he's got seven vials from that sixth seal. That's the wrath, you know, that's poured out upon this earth, upon people that are not saved, you know, and that kind of thing. So you've got six seals of various things going on. Wars, you know, rumors of wars, famines, all kinds of things. Things that are actually happening on the earth, you know, right now. You know, these are things that are going on right now as we speak. Wars, rumors of wars, famines, all sorts of, of pestilence and things like that. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, you know, as we end. And then we get the rapture, and now then we get those seven vials or seven trumpets, you know, and that's when a third of the earth is burned up, and, you know, all, that's when, uh, you know, the, I think the fifth uh, trumpet or the fifth vial, you know, uh, is, is done, and, and you've got the locusts coming out of hell and stinging people and causing them to hurt for five months, that kind of thing. You know, that happens after that, that, after that sixth seal, when that seventh seal is opened. All these things are going on on people who are on, on this earth. We'll take a look at that at another time when we study the book of Revelation. But, you know, this, so this is Jesus Christ right here. You know, this is the one. And the reason I bring this up is because I, I see a lot of people, you know, kind of take Jesus for granted here on this earth. Kind of take it flippant. You know, like he's just always this humble and meek guy. And when he was here on this earth, he was. He was humble. He was meek. He was a servant. But, you know, I mean, he would sit down and little kids would come on to his, and, you know, he would suffer the little children to come on to me. They would sit on his lap, those kinds of things. But look, Jesus Christ, you know, the Savior of the world, doesn't look like that anymore. Okay, he's back in his heavenly form. And it is a fearful thing, especially if you're on the wrong side. You know, it's very scary. I mean, let's take a look at what happens if you're on the wrong side. Uh, let's go to, uh, well, let's take a look at what happens if you're on the right side. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. This is what Jesus Christ is to the believers, to those who believe on him, to those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 7, verse 16. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light in on them nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This is Jesus Christ with us, the believers. But how, you know, what about those who are unbelievers? Let's take a look in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, beginning in verse 11. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This is Jesus Christ coming down to this earth. Now this is not the second coming right here. And a lot of times people get confused about this. We have the first coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, when Jesus Christ came to this earth, born in a manger in Bethlehem, first coming, all right? Second coming of Christ is the rapture, you know, where every eye shall see him, all that, okay? And then he, you know, he's back in heaven with us while he's pouring out his wrath upon this earth. Jesus Christ is not here while he's pouring out his wrath on this earth. This is Jesus coming now at the battle of Armageddon, 
the Battle of Armageddon, which you know, basically signals the end of you know, the, the wrath being poured out, which is not the end of the world. As a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't understand this. Look, Jesus Christ, is, he's, he's came the first time. He comes the second time in the rapture. Then he comes down for the Battle of Armageddon. He defeats the armies of the world, okay, in this battle. And he, he, we have his description here of what he looks like. And then he sets up his millennial reign on this earth for a thousand years. But a lot of people think, well, that's it. You know, that's the end. But that's not the end. Because actually when he comes in our, our Armageddon and he destroys the, the armies of the world, he's not destroying everyone. You know, there are still people left here on this earth who are, who are, are not saved. You know, he, it never, the Bible never tells us that he destroys every single person. He destroys the armies. But, you know, if he destroys the army of the United States, you still have some citizens of the United States that are going to make it through everything. Okay, then he sets up his millennial reign. And after the millennial reign, at the end of the thousand years, Satan, who had been bound in the bottomless pit, is going to be let out for a little season, according to the Bible. Let out for a little season to do his tempting and everything. And then at the end of that thousand years, there is another battle between Jesus Christ and his saints and the Gog and Magog. You know, that's where Gog and Magog come in at the end, at the end of the thousand years. You know, and then we have this battle. And then... You know, everyone now who is unsaved, you know, that's it. They're destroyed. They've lost all chance. And now we get the new heaven and new earth after that. So a lot of people, you know, don't, don't quite, uh, you know, pick that up. They think, you know, after the rapture, that's basically it. There, there's a lot more com that comes, you know, after, after that. But let's take a look at Jesus here in uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. This is Jesus Christ coming back at the Battle of Armageddon. Verse 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, we've seen that already, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepressness of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vestures and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sat on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast and then that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So this is Jesus Christ coming in the battle of Armageddon with a vesture dipped in blood, coming to destroy those that do not believe in him, coming to destroy all of those armies at the battle of Armageddon. Jesus, you know, Jesus is love. And a lot of people... I like to say, well, you know, God is love, Jesus is love, and that is the truth. You know, because for God so loved the world, right, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But if you leave this world rejecting him, the Jesus that you're going to find after that is one of wrath. It's one of, you know, anger. And, and people, you know, people in hell, they're going to bow and confess to Jesus Christ the Lord. The same people that's on this earth say Jesus Christ doesn't exist, you know, and it's just a fairy tale of your imagination, and you Christians are stupid and idiots for believing it, and, you know, we came from monkeys, and, you know, we have all this evolution out there. We've got all these, uh, you know, things that we believe as far as the way man came to this earth, and there is no God. These people are going to bow at the name of Jesus, just like everyone else, and they're going to be fearful because the Jesus that they see is not the Jesus that, you know, we accepted as our Lord and Savior. I mean, it is the same Jesus, but it is different in that, you know, we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, and he says, you know, their sins will I remember no more. 
as far as east is from the west, I've taken their sins away. You know, and when we get to heaven, you know, we are going to be worshiping, we're going to be praising, the lamb will feed us, there will be no more hunger, there will be no more thirsting, you know, nothing. Jesus will be taking care of us. But if you reject him, the Jesus that you're going to find is this angry Jesus on the horse with a sword in his mouth that's coming to destroy, that's coming to execute justice on this earth. See, the Jesus of the Christmas story, that has already happened. Jesus has fulfilled that. He has taken our place. You know, his blood has been shed for our sins. And he offers that free gift. Free to anyone that will take it. God is not willing that any should perish, according to the Bible, but that all come to repentance. But if you don't do that, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Jesus that you see is not going to be the one that you have, you know, pictures that you have hanging around, you know, saying, oh, it's all right, I love you anyways. That's no, going to be an angry one. You know, he's going to, and he's going to be scary looking. You know, he's going to have, have eyes like a flaming fire. You know, my kids sometimes when I was growing up, when, when they were growing up, they would say, you know, when dad gets onto him, you know, he, he looks kind of scary. Right, his eyes would light up like they could call them crazy eyes, you know, if I was get, you know, getting on to him or something like that. You know, it's nothing compared to, you know, Jesus. His, his face is going to be so bright like the sun. His eyes are going to be as a flaming fire. His feet as brass in a fire. His voice as a voice of many waters. You know, we need to give him the respect of someone like that and not just always joking around with Jesus Christ. You know, something to think about. A lot of times people don't think about that, but that is the Jesus that we are going to see. That's the Jesus that we are going to be familiar with. When we see him face to face, we're not going to see someone that looks like the pictures that we see in the Last Supper and things like that. No, we're going to see the Jesus face to face in the book of Revelation. And it's going to be scary. It was scary enough to John that he fainted. You know, so something to remember. You know, I mean, God, you know, pe people like to try to humanize God and Jesus on this earth and say, oh, well, it's just all about love and just, you know, do whatever you want. You know, uh, uh, Joyce Myers has a book out, you know, God is not mad at you. you know, that's the name of her book. Yes, he is, <laughs> especially if you're living in sin. You know, God is mad at you. God, God does get angry. You know, he does punish and when we, are, when we leave this earth and there are no more Christians here, you know, this earth's in for a world of hurt when, God poured, when Jesus pours out his wrath on this earth. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that you will help us to look to you, Lord, as with, uh, you know, with thanks in our heart for saving us from our sins, Lord, as we remember, Lord, this special time of year where you came to earth. Lord, you had so much power, power over angels, power over everything, but came to earth in the form of a man, in the form of someone that was not good looking or anything like that, tempted in all points like as we are, living a perfect life so that you could die on the cross and save us from our sins. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, help us to give you the respect that you deserve, Lord, as we remember you this season. In Jesus' name, amen.